Okay, now we just upgraded our era, which is... It does a couple of things, and I'm not... Uh, 100% sure on everything it does, but one of the things it does do is alerts all the other players that we are getting ahead in tech. <laughs> We're not really, though. I mean, we just grabbed something in this, this line here that they don't have yet because we would have been notified about it. So when you upgrade your era, uh, relationships cost more points, uh, things that you buy with faith cost more faith to buy, things like that change. The things that the uh, city-states do are upgraded, like they have better units. The specifics, uh, I'm not really 100% sure on offhand. But uh, you can see the changes, and it's not usually a big deal until you get to these later ones, like the Renaissance, which unlocks espionage. The problem with that is that it doesn't unlock it just for you. For some reason, everybody gets a spy. <laughs> I guess getting there early would be kind of unfair if you were the only one with a spy, but yeah, that's one really big one to care about is Renaissance. And when a lot of people get to the Atomic Era, you unlock the UN, which is one of the ways to win the game. Okay, so we have a few tiles left to upgrade, and we really need to get working on a second city. We got our great library, and we got our free library as a result, so our science jumped up to 13. They want us to build this and get it even higher. This would take us up to 16 science. And then it would apply that 50% science buff. So, we would be at 24 science if we built this. That's why I said that's really good. But you know what we need to do is finish our nearly complete granary. And we need to go west with our soldiers. We need to heal this warrior. Good morning, Kinder. I'm in a wonder building mood, but I also want to expand. And since we went tradition, the only way we're going to expand at all is to build settlers, which is a time consuming process. We need to do it, though. We have no choice. We really need a second city. We're Building that wonder took a lot of our Even time. Even brute beasts and wandering birds do not fall into the same traps or nets twice. Okay, so we have that. Now, Stonehenge is right here. 14 turns. Temple, 4 turns for 4 faith. Or 2 faith a turn. Big difference between these two is that one costs maintenance, the other does not, and obviously gives way more. And is a uh, wonder. So there's a race for it again, but it won't be anywhere near as uh, confrontational as the Great Library was. We also have a choice for a food growth. This one's not that great for me. It's it's a nice thing to have. I love it. I love I love it when I'm going tradition because I love to build archers in general. I love it. Ranged units in this game. They're really good. Nobo's right, we can buy a Settler next turn. They are 500 gold apiece, that's a good idea. I have been saving my money up, and that's a good way to spend it. We'll do that. I kind of want to just go for the temple, but Stonehenge will be nice to have, and I don't want anyone else to get it. Let's, let's do that. So I haven't talked about this yet, but uh, the numbers on the city. Five means... How many tiles we can work. Three is the number of turns based on our current food before this number goes up, and we have six tiles to work. And twelve defense, which is just a rating of how strong we are against attacks. You can improve that with buildings in the building, you can improve it with the, the population going up, and you can improve it with garrisons. And you can improve it by building on a hill. Like if I put my city on this place instead of down here, it would have been 17 instead of 12 right now. Which is sometimes a concern. Let's heal. Let's get some units on the field too. Ah, the Congo has iron for me.
It's supposed to be up here. For some reason it's not. I guess because I don't have the tech for it yet. But yeah. Oh, this is an easy quest. <laughs> this is probably one of the best quests to get. They want us to find the land of Japan. Now, if we want to do that, all we have to do is come here, open this up, trade. Give me your embassy. What do you want for it? One gold a turn. Great. Quest complete. Free reputation. 133 rep. 167. We are going to be the friend of Congo for the rest of the game, basically. <laughs> That's going to be a long time before I even have to think about the reputation on the Congo. Oh, if we need to buy those settlers. I do move kind of fast sometimes, and I, I, uh, I suffer for it. I'm very uh, fast-paced in this game. I try to keep it interesting to watch. I would turn off the animations, too, to speed it up, and I probably will later on in even this game. I just left them on because it's easier to see what's going on with them on. First free unit from the Congo. What is it? It's a warrior. Good. Well, probably the worst thing they could possibly give us, but still, free unit. Our workers are running out of things to build. So these settlers are just like the workers, they can be captured, and that's the worst thing. You don't want them to go unescorted. I have nothing for you to do, worker. I could kill this worker and get 17 gold. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll hold off on that. I'm going to have a second city soon, and he's going to be needing to do some upgrades in that city. Policy upgrade. Let's get our next piety level. Now we have temples. Temples increase gold by 25%. That's pretty good. But is it what I want right now? Not really. This is an interesting thing, and it doesn't really seem to apply for my position on the map. Not with this city. It will later in the game, when there are multiple religions fighting for influence. I'm kinda... ...lukewarm about all these upgrades. This one probably is the best. Nah, we already have this. Like, this legalism is what you're talking about. It won't give us our second culture building until we unlock the tech for it. I don't think we have that yet. Usually it gives you a monument, but we already built one, so it upgrades it to the next one before it gives us a free unit. It doesn't waste it, it gives us the next best one that can. If I were going to put a point in tradition, I would put it into the wonder building buff right here. Probably. I don't like this garrison one at all. This is the worst one in tradition as far as I'm thinking, because I don't defend that often. I'm usually the aggressor. <laughs> well, that's just the way I play, so having a 50% range buff right here, this is not one that I, I always pick this one last. The rest of these are really good for growing. We really should level this up. Over piety. This is probably the last time I'll go piety first. <laughs> I don't really think it's that good as a starter. It'll be fine, though. We are just growing a little bit slower than we should be, that's all. And we will pick up tradition when we can. So what are we doing with these archers? Ah, enemies.
yeah, if I took that legalism, it would give me a free monument in my next city, but it would, uh, if amphitheaters are the thing, I think they are, if they're next up on the list, then as soon as I get the tech for amphitheaters, then my next city would, my first city would get amphitheaters. That's usually the way it goes for me, because I always get a monument right away. I like early monuments, it really helps a lot. I don't think that there's ever a reason why you shouldn't be going for that. No matter how you're playing your Civ, you should have a monument pretty soon in the game. That culture helps a lot. The only thing I can think of where you wouldn't do that is if you were a pure warrior and you were killing barbarians, because then you would get honor for that. Ah, Wittenberg, quest complete. They are happy that we are the fastest faith grower. Which is a good thing to hear, also. And so we get 40 rep with them. We're friends. They want us to generate a great merchant. We can control that to some degree, but not... With what we got right now, we can't really influence it too much, so... This is something that will eventually happen. Right here you can see us growing a great scientist. Because we have the great library, we have a great scientist point right there. One. We get one point per turn towards this, and after a hundred of those turns with the Great Library, we will get a Great Scientist. So that's what it's talking about with the Great Merchant. We aren't generating one at all right now, because we don't have the means to do so yet. You shoot me, I'll shoot you right back. Now, where am I going to put this city? We have two good choices here, in my opinion. Well, good is relative, because I think that they all kind of suck, honestly. But the this tower right here is not bad, I guess. This one gives me marble, which is not only is it a luxury, but it's like the one luxury in the game that does something special. It makes you build monuments 15% faster for that one city that has it. But we... The problem with that, though, is that it's going to be my second city. It's going to be a shitty city because it's half mountain. It's never going to have good production, so even with 15%, 15% of nothing is nothing. So it is a luxury, and that's pretty much all that will ever be because it's in such a shitty place. If it were down here in Constantinople from the start, it would be a different story. Let's just go for this tile right here. It's on the ocean, it's got citrus, it's got more salt, it's got fish. If you're on if you're next to the ocean, it's very important that you're right next to the ocean, because this if you're not on the ocean, even if your city eventually encompasses it, you cannot build boats. And you cannot upgrade these tiles. You can't work them. Actually, you might be able to work them. I don't think that you can. I'm not sure. You may be able to work them, but you sure as hell can't build the boats to do it. You're just way better off moving to the coast if you can help it. Or on a river is another way, because rivers give you more buildings to build. The water mill that's in Constantinople, we got that because we're on the river. Ah, we've been shot. A horse. A horse. My kingdom for a horse. We have unlocked our unique unit as well as three other things. Let's get to that. Here's our second city. Adrianople. We're gonna let them finish their mines and then I'm gonna send them up to get those citrus. If they can. They can, yeah. So they're gonna have to chop down the forest first. So even though we need a plantation to get the oranges, which we have already, we would also need mining to chop it down first. So you need two techs to get this orange. That's not a concern later in the game, like we are now, but at the very start, I would have had to worry about that. I would have had to get two techs instead of just one, like I did here. I just needed mining for these. I would have needed both mining and calendars for citrus. Uh, what are we doing now? We can get this uh, unique boat, which is a very powerful ranged boat. 
but like I said, we're on Pangaea. This is the less useful continent type for boats, but we do need sailing anyway so that we can get the pearls right next to our capital. We'll have both our unique units. Let's just do it. We'll see how it goes. Now, don't be alarmed by that uh, 38 turns. That's because we are getting two production here. New cities are new, and they only have one worker, and they suck. So we're going to have to level this city up a little bit before it will be any use to us. So, with our two hammers a turn, let's go ahead and start a monument. And we'll shoot these damn barbarians again, but they'll keep on coming. Go get some support down here. There we go. Victory. Generic enemy is killed. Oh, religion founded. I'm not the first. Buddhism has been founded somewhere. We still only need 200 for religion. I'm surprised it didn't go up. I thought that it did. Okay, so... Archer. Also has the cover upgrade. I never get that, though. Not an archer. I just, I don't take damage on archers when I can help it. Even though I just did, and I'm full of shit, all that damage is from another archer. I still am recommending that you go straight drill, or straight, uh, well, it's barrage or accuracy for archers. And I would recommend whichever one you pick for level 1, get it to level 3. We'll see why later. So we don't even know what religion... Uh, Buddhism goes to here. What Civ? Because we don't know who did it. Whoever it was, it was one of these five unmet Civs that we don't know. There's the barbarian's nest that sent that archer after me. Let's get him. He who commands the sea has command of everything. All right. It looks like we're going to get Stonehenge. That will help our faith growth tremendously. So I'm pretty confident that we're going to get it next turn. Now what tech do we need now? Let's go ahead and get roads. Oh, we have roads already. So what do we need now? We need this will upgrade our archers, but we're going horsemen this game because that's our special unit. We're going to take advantage of them. They're on the field now. We just need to make them. Hanging Gardens is another good wonder. Uh, catapults are a good siege weapon. I'm going to avoid optics. All this uh, boat stuff, we don't really need that. It's not good enough to merit. Unlike sailing, which we needed for pearls, we don't really need any more of it unless we're going down the tree here. Like, education's really good because it boosts our science. We don't need sailing for that. I think we're going to head in that direction. And we'll get all the text we need to do that. And we can come back and pick up these other ones we missed later in a matter of three or four turns each. No problem. Stonehenge. Stonehenge eventually, if Archer don't kill my barbarian. Oh, god damn it. Time crumbles. 
those things. Everything grows old and is forgotten under the power of time. Well, the party's kind of ruined by that, but whatever. It's still okay. We lost a unit. It was Potato. He's finally fallen already. I don't like using, uh, losing units ever. Especially ones I've leveled up, because leveled up units are very dangerous. So we're back to square one with that. We have a warrior who's level one still. They get XP for getting hit or attacking enemies. So he's going to level up next turn. He'll beat Potato too. Now, let's build some units that we don't have. Well, you know what? We can make some money with a cargo ship. We're allowed to have up to two now based on what we've done. Based on the text we've unlocked and stuff. And by the way, there's Stonehenge in the, the ocean. Yeah. Very good. If we want these pearls, we have to get a workboat. Let's do that. Okay, so, the jerks who killed Potato. We'll go open with this guy. Looks like open terrain down here. Sort of. <laughs> well, let's do it anyway. Maybe he'll have better luck. Eh, yeah, not really. Those barbs will be dead next turn. In the meantime, let's get... They want us to upgrade the salt. That's not what I think we should do. We should get this citrus because it's a luxury we don't already own. These are global. We do not need more than one salt ever. We will have two to trade, not just one. That city up there, Adrianople, is already benefiting from salt as much as the one down here is. Okay, so the work boots are not like workers. They die in order to <laughs> upgrade the tile. <laughs> we need one more work boat to upgrade the fish, which I don't care about too much. We'll do that later. We do want the pearls, though, because two gold for happiness. Let's do that. You can see the upgrade happen. These can be ransacked, and you would have to replace it with another work boat if that happened. They're easy to build, though. That's done. Now we can do... I want to get some units on the field. Here's the unique building we get for being next to a river, which is a pretty good building. I want to get that, but not yet. Maybe we'll keep on building some wonders. This uh, archer upgrade one is pretty good. Free social policy is nice. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's 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 an okay way to start. And I think we might do that because of the way we're playing. It'll help us get piety finished early. And it's really unlikely that anyone else will go for it because we got here because of the Great Library. We jump started right into this. No one else is going to have the ability to make it while we're already in progress. Now we got a message from Wittenberg that they are not going to be our friends soon, and that's a shame. So because they're hostile personality, <laughs> their friendship drops 1.5 instead of 1 like the other one does. So, yeah. We're just not going to get that faith bonus soon. But we're pretty high up here, and we're already going to have a religion soon. Like I said, 
just because you hit the minimum does not mean you get it right away. It might be a couple turns if we're unlucky. Ah, good thing I didn't try to build the Temple of Artemis. No, Bonaga just took it. Uh, the Congo can defend itself. They are being raided, and that sucks, but eh, they'll be fine. We have hit the religion thing that we needed. Our, our faith went back down to zero, because this is what we were trying to create. A great person. What he does is... Well, he's a great prophet. He's a specific kind. And what he does is either starts a religion or upgrades a tile... And the tile upgrade gives you like 8 faith if you work it. But obviously we want to find a religion because we will be the second religion in the game. We can look at the other religion too, by the way, if we want to see what they picked. Here's the pantheons. Here's Buddhism. Buddhism is the other religion. They get 2 faith from quarries. That's their pantheon ability. They get uh, the ability to build cathedrals and they have a plus 15 on the city-state relationships automatically. But only if the city-state likes the religion. So let's do this, find a religion. Now we enable this button, and we can pick our religion symbol for flavor. My standard title. Okay, so there's our Pantheon bonus, it stays, we can pick Founder Belief, which is a set here. The ones I just read are missing from the list now, of course, so we can pick a couple other ones. I like this one here. We can get some money with every four followers. This adds up real quick. It's, it's an easy way to get some cash going. There are a couple other good ones, too. Uh, the nice thing about religion, if you're going uh, Liberty, is that it gives you a lot of happiness if you take things like this. This one, I think, does not add up as quickly as the other one. If you're caring about rushing science, this is a nice bonus. Let's go with the money. I usually always do anyway if it's there. I just like money. Money is pretty useful, no matter how you're playing. So here we can get happiness from a very common building, that's nice. We can get some culture from another common building. If we had World Wonders, this would be a great one. If we had lots of World Wonders. We could really stack this. With the other one, we'd be getting six. Right now, we, we would be getting four right now, actually. So that's, that's, that's an okay one when we're building a lot of those. And we already built two. But I'm not going for that when we can uh, pick some better stuff. The really good ones here are the the building opportunities. You use faith, actual little white bird faith generations to buy units outright as though they were gold. And you can't get these buildings any other way, and they're really good buildings. Pagoda is one of my favorites. It's two faith, two culture, two happiness. That's really good. Two happiness is really good. This one for the way we're playing, mosques, three faith. I'd rather have three faith than two happiness with the playstyle we're going for right now. So that's probably what we're going to pick. If you're playing pacifist, this one's really good. If you can get the computers to leave you alone. If they ever go to war with you, it's cancelled. Uh, let's go with the mosque. And because we are the Byzantines, we get a bonus belief, which is extremely powerful because... This is not limited at all. It lets us pick anywhere from any of these, and that includes this Enhancer Belief, which is the most powerful array. We can do things that spread our religion really fast, and my favorite one 
is in here somewhere. This one. The preachers. It increases the range of our city's spread for the religion. There's a limitation on how far it can reach, and this raises it a little bit, and that helps so much. If you're a spamming unit, I usually don't spam a lot of missionaries, but you can use them to spread religion too, and you can reduce their cost. That's good. I would definitely recommend that you use an enhancer belief with this, though, to really get your religion on top of the, the chain. The religions will be fighting each other, and you can get the edge really quick by picking one of those. Or we could get pagodas. <laughs> let's let's go with uh, let's go with the town of preachers. And there we go. Dance fever is now a city thing. Five people here worship it with thirty pressure. Two people are still following our pantheon. They'll be converted eventually. There is no pressure on this. There will be. Because it's in range, it's going to start getting dance fever, and probably the Congo as well. That's probably about as far as the range on Constantinople reaches with our upgrade even. But once uh, it gets some more power, this one and this one will be getting hit by both of these. And that's how it spreads. You can check the influence, you can do things to greatly improve that. The population helps a lot, and all the followers in it. And you can manually increase it. I can buy missionaries and send them over here to force it to follow. We'll get to tool around with that some. But in the meantime, we do need to get those second parts of the faith. And we do that by leveling up religion one final time. We need to level up religion by the same way we did before. Except now we need 300 faith for our next prophet. Oh yeah, that's a new thing with Brave New World. Caravans can trade faith. And so I will I will be doing caravans anyway, so kind of we're going to spread it automatically almost. We need to heal these guys. Ah. My salt just finished, and he wants to trade salt for dye, which is a even trade. Luxuries for trade are exactly the same. We're both going to get four happiness out of this deal. The only time when it's not the case is right here. Every city eventually demands... Well, hold on a second. This is just uh, who has the most culture. Who cares? So every city usually demands, eventually, a specific luxury. This one wants copper. This one doesn't have a demand yet. If you meet this demand, your city starts to grow fast for a little while. So other than that, there's really not a difference between luxuries. I don't really need happiness just now, so I'd rather sell it. But nobody has any money. So I guess we're going to do that trade. Oh, he does have money, and I don't know why he was giving me dies before. We'll take the money, Odu. Thanks. That's all the money we're making, seven gold a turn. <laughs> we're kind of desperately poor. Why is that? Let's check. It's because they're not working the pearls. Let's fix that. Or should we? Nah, there's not really any worse tiles to take it off. You do not have to work the pearls to get this bonus, by the way. You get the four happiness, two gold, no matter what. As long as the tiles improve. Usually luxury tiles are really good, though, so you usually want to, but in that case, it's not that great. I want to get some units on the field. This is the last wonder I'm going to build for a while. 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it. I'm even more confident about this one than the other two. It should be just easier and easier to get these as I pull ahead in tech, which we can check our speed on, by the way. We are last place in tech. Almost. But that's no surprise when you're playing on the upper difficulties. The computer's always ahead at the start. Hopefully that will change <laughs> as the game goes on. We should be pulling ahead. New units, what do we get? A horseman. Too bad that he can't give me my special unit. Well, at least now we can compare cataphracts to horsemen. They want marble. Well, it's right over there. Go get it. Yeah, we can. I have nowhere to expand. Hmm. This city is is uh one of the worst cities. <laughs> Hold on. I wanna look at this. Okay, it's it's got no luxuries or anything like that, no special tiles. Two tiles are completely useless. Two are hills, I like hills for production and the other two. This one's a good tile, but I mean, no luxuries usually makes for a pretty mediocre city at best. He ruined Memphis. Oh, he built the pyramids over Egypt. What is drama but life with the dull bits cut out? Yeah, you do, you do have to work the tile to get the two gold. You get the four happiness no matter what. The happiness is pretty much the main attraction of the luxury. So, when we're looking at this tile, we're talking about two food, four gold when it's worked. But even four gold... To me, I'd rather have, uh... Usually I don't like food, but when we're playing the way we are right now... Kinda don't care about gold that much. Over food. 